Hello, it's me, and I've had a number of requests for this guy. This is the Jupiter. This is the Diane Bermuda Jupiter Cube. And um, I've had a number of people saying that they would like some kind of an instruction on this one, that they really can't find any help with this out there, and that this is probably among the harder of the Bermuda Cubes. So we're going to try to navigate our way through this. Now I'll tell you, the issue with puzzles like this, especially the Diane, is it's in essence a bandaged puzzle. And the problem with bandaged puzzles is you're kind of on your own with algorithms. You can't really use algorithms that you know of. You know what you need to do, but it's kind of like being lost in the woods, seeing your house up ahead, but something is blocking your way. And you know that you can just, if you can just walk straight, you can get there, but you have to take this serpiginous route uh, to get where you want to go. Well, that's kind of what this is like. So. What I'm going to do in order to solve this is I have to give you a little bit of background because the fact is the only thing that we're going to need here are two algorithms. Just two algorithms and we can solve this entire puzzle. The rest is all strategy and positioning, but even that's not going to be too much of a difficulty. In order to solve this, what I had to do is I had to use one old algorithm and then I had to come up with a new algorithm that I found I could use pretty, uh, pretty well. Um, but the good news is that this new algorithm is not difficult to memorize and it's really a variation of an old algorithm. So with algorithms that aren't too difficult to, to remember, you'll be able to solve this thing. Right off the bat, you can see uh, this has three triangles, but they're faced in haphazard ways and you can't turn anything except one side. One side will get you started. So in order to get a good background with this, um, uh, kind of a puzzle. The one algorithm to, to understand, which everybody knows, is what's called the Soon. The Soon algorithm is basically uh, an edge permutation algorithm that, when applied, will keep this the same and will rotate these guys around. And that's R U R I U R 2 U R I. So what you find is this stayed the same. It did do some things with a corner share, but we won't worry about that yet. Um, this moved to here, this moved to here, and this moved to here. So that's the kind of um, movement that, that that's going to do. Now the only thing that you have to keep in mind with just the soon, or this R U R U R 2 U R I, is that if you have two in and two not where they're supposed to be, then, well, here's how you deal with that. So let's say I have a situation where I've got this. This is where it's supposed to be, this is where it's supposed to be, but this isn't and this isn't. So basically these two need to swap. Now I could do an adjacent corner swap, uh, adjacent edge swap rather, um, but the problem with that is I'm going to create placement issues, misplacement on this side. And in this puzzle I just as soon not do that, but in terms of using the soon we have a way around that, which you all know pretty well. Basically what that is, is you take the two that are in, put one to the right and one to the back, and then do that algorithm again. Because what it's going to do is this is going to come to here, this is going to come to here. So these two will be in association with each other, but this will flip over to here, so this will be in the right place in conjunction with this piece. So again, find the two pieces that are in, to the right and back, R U R I U R to U R I. Move this just with a U, and you see that all these are in. Now you know this very well, but I wanted to remind you of this, just in case you are foolhardy enough to pick up this puzzle, try to solve it, and never having solved a Rubik's Cube before. So let's get this back. Okay, so that's the soon, but let's take this to another, um, a slightly other level here. We introduce something else that can happen if you do a soon and an anti-soon. Um, we uh, use this for the three by three by uh, the two by two by three floppy eye cube, and this is a way that we can take these two uh, corners and rotate them. So we'll rotate this and we'll rotate this, and all you got to do is that same algorithm, and then just do the opposite, just do the anti version of that. So if I do R U R R I U R two U R I. Then I come to the other side and do L-I-U-I-L-U-I-L-I-2-U-L-I. What that'll do is that'll very nicely and neatly flip these guys. So what this did is it turned this one counterclockwise and this one counterclockwise. And if I do that enough times, it'll get this one back. Now, before I do the next move, I'm going to point something out. So I can do R-U, R-I-U, R-2-U, R-I. Now, let's say I can't do an L move. What I can do then is I can actually do a U move and just hold it, well, here's my U move, and just hold it over here. Now you could do it in terms of an F-I-U-I, -I, 
but I prefer to hold it here so that I can just think of the same algorithm, li, ui, l, ui, li, 2u, li, and just move it back. So you're going to need to know that as well, and as you can see, all you need to know, all you need to use, are r moves, u moves, and instead of an L move, move it to here and just do an F move. So that's going to be important. Now the final algorithm to know in terms of solving this is a kind of a move where I can three cycle corner pieces. And the main hurdle that, a hurdle that I had with this puzzle is finding myself in a situation where I had to do a three, um, uh, a three cycle of three corners. I had to cycle three corners only doing R moves and U, uh, and, uh, U moves. And also F moves. R moves, U moves, and F moves. So this is the algorithm that I came up with to do that and this will be the saving grace for this puzzle over here. And that's going to be, now again, it flows pretty nicely and it's not too difficult to memorize and it starts off with an old friend, the soon. So if anything, this is a soon only type of algorithmic puzzle. So start off with that. R U R I U R to U R I. Then do a U and we do a simple commutator of F R I F I R. Then do another bridge of a to U and do another reshuffle here doing F I U I F and then another to U. And that's it. That's the algorithm. Now taking a look at what had occurred, it looks like things may be a little messed up, but they're really not. Taking a look at this, you see this corner was the same. First off, I'll point out this edge is the same and this edge is also in the same place. They just got flipped. So one use of this algorithm will flip these two edges. And that's all it does to edges. All the rest of the edges are fine. But you notice this corner stayed the same. This corner is actually in the right place. It's in the same place. However, it's just rotated. So these corners were not touched. The only corners that actually moved was this one, this one, and this one. And as you can see, what happened is this corner went here, this corner went here, and this corner went here. So this was a way to three cycle these three corners without changing the position of any of the edges or any of the other corners. Again, this went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. Now I'll point out again, um, and I'll point out that if I do this algorithm again, it'll three cycle these corners, but it'll also flip these edges back. R U R I U R to U R I U F R I F I R to U F I U I F to U. And as promised, these have been rotated back and these are still cycling around. So now you can guess what's going to happen. What's going to happen next is when I do it, all of these are going to be in the right place, but these are going to be rotated wrong, and these corners are also not going to be rotated correctly either. R U R I U R to U R I. So this is a good one to practice. As you can see, it flows pretty well. So having done this, all these corners are now where they need to be but these are rotated wrong and these are rotated wrong. So there appears to be something that's a little bit out of sync with this. Uh, but what I'm going to do is, is this. If I were to do this three more times, it'll get this back because it's an odd number of times that I'm doing the algorithm. So it's out. If I do it uh, again, it'll be in, again out, and again in. So three times we'll get this back and we'll also recycle these back to where they're supposed to be. Okay, so I just basically put this back um, to here. So that is the, all the algorithms that you need to know in order to solve this. Now, I need to describe something else which will make the solve of this much, much easier. So when looking at this puzzle, uh, it's going to be very difficult to solve it in this position. When you look at these triangles, the way that these triangles can be moved is in its place of maximum potential to maneuver this puzzle. I'm going to put this in what I call a ready position. So this is your solve position, but I'm also going to define a ready position and an action position. So let me tell you what I mean. A ready position is where I take this side, this R, and I'm going to move, I'm going to have it to where I've got a triangle in front, the top, and to the right, and you're going to find whatever your color scheme is, that the one that's on the top is going to be facing this way, the one in front is going to be up, and the one um, to the right is going to be down. I'm going to do a 2R, then I'm going to move this 
over to here so that all these triangles are facing each other. So these triangles are all sort of pointing towards each other. Now this configuration, to those who collect these puzzles, you may recognize as, as the Neptune configuration. The Neptune Bermuda Cube also has three triangles, but those triangles are facing each other. And the fact is, it's so much easier to solve it from a Neptune position than from a Jupiter position. So what we would actually do is we're going to solve it into this position. Because this is the position, what I call the ready position, where I can do maximum motions. I can do up moves, I can do U moves, and I can do F moves. And if I have my up, my U, and my F, well, then I can apply a lot of my algorithms. The reason that I uh, put it in the ready position is it helps me orient regarding where things are at, and it also helps me scramble the puzzle. So this is going to be the ready position with all the triangles facing each other, pointing towards each other. The action position is going to be the position in which I'm going to be actually doing all of my algorithms with the final step. The action position is this. This is on top over here. Now this is going to be placed in front of us. We're going to do an R move to bring this up. So we're going to do R. We're going to do FI. Now the reason why this is my action position is it's so much easier to apply my algorithms here because the center is not a triangle. Because it's not a triangle, I have a lot more freedom to move my U-move anywhere that I want. And when I do that, still be able to do R-moves and F-moves and U-moves. But I can move it here and do that unfettered. If I had a Bermuda Triangle here, I wouldn't be able to turn the U-move in any configuration. So this most resembles what I'm going to find in my Rubik's Cube. Edge, 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 corner, 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 corner. So this is going to be my action position. Now, don't get hung up on the names, but that's what I'm going to call it because that's just going to be easier for me to follow and easier for me to explain. It's not easy to explain how to solve these things. To move this back into my ready position from action to ready, is I'm simply going to do my F to move this to here, and an RI, and there you go. And when I'm ready to do my final solving move, I'm going to solve it into this position and just move it here and go for splat. And from time to time, I'll put it back in this position to orient myself as to where everything is. So that is really what you need to know. So I've got myself in the R position. Now just, just to give you a final demonstration, remember, when I three cycled the corners with this algorithm, this moves to here, this moves to here, and this moves to here. And then these two edges rotate. But I can rotate this anywhere I want to place these in whatever position that I want. And if I don't want what is, if I want what is here down to here, I simply do one of these. I just have to remember to move it back. That's the raw material that you need to know in order to solve this puzzle. So with the ready position, I'm just going to go ahead and start my scramble. Now, the thing about the instruction of a puzzle like this is you never know what configuration you're going to end up with with a scramble. And I've scrambled this and solved this a number of times. So my hope is that I'm going to be able to get it into, well, most every configuration um, that poses a dilemma so that I can demonstrate. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of separating these trapezoidal areas um, from here. Now, I should have pointed something else out as well. Unfortunately, I started the scramble maybe a little too soon. But I want you also to notice that the uh, along the hypotenuse, you've got these slabs over here, these fissured type edges here and here. Now with the red one, you did not have on the hypotenuse, in the ready position, one of these. You had a red one here, and you had another red one over here. And then you had a different three over here. So along this hypotenuse, in the ready position, is one of these usual corners with two other colors on the other side. And what that's going to be, is that's going to be the white and yellow one. This one, actually. I didn't scramble this one up yet, but this is going to be the one that belongs to this hypotenuse. If you had a Neptune cube, it would be, well, easier to see. It's one of these guys that's here. Here it isn't, so that's the only other issue, and I, I hope it's going to be clear as I solved it, and perhaps I should have pointed that out earlier, and it won't cause too much confusion. Needless to say, you are going to have to know how to solve a 3x3 three three to really completely understand what the heck I'm doing. So. Notice that I'm doing all of my maneuvering in this position. Um, so I want to say scramble this. I just open a path at right angles, take this up, and now I can solve this triangle. 
and I can move this down. And I'm kind of free to do whatever kind of movements that I want, as long as I'm not being bandaged by anything. And it's easy to keep track of, of the bandaging aspects. Uh, let's see, this will come here, this will come here, so I'm just going to keep scrambling it. So I can, I can take a pretty good amount of control over what I'm doing here. Let, we'll let this participate in the scramble a little bit more here. Alright, worst comes to worst, I always get myself back in the ready position to orient myself. Okay. Back in the ready position. Uh, now I want to scramble this up here, so I'm just going to open up a path. And this will help familiarize yourself with the motion of this puzzle. I'm going to bring this up. Now, quite easily, I could continue the scramble process and the solve process. Here's my ready position in my action position. In my action position, same kind of thing. I can whip this around and scramble things up to my heart's content. Okay, I'm going to keep going on with this. Abracadabra.